Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is David Novak. T.S. Eliot was sometimes amused or even bemused how something that he had written 40 years previous had grown and taken on a life of its own. Uh, he, I think, in one essay even mentioned that he uh, he couldn't even remember what he was going for uh, when he crafted a certain phrase. Uh, regardless, he thought it was somewhat amusing that a, a, a statement he had made 40 years ago was taken as a, a truth for all time and that he was never to have changed from that uh, assertion. Well, I came across something of that. I think when you are making uh, booktube videos, uh, that sort of conundrum perhaps happens even more easily. Um, I, some people, when they sit down, they're very meticulous and they've mapped out everything they plan to say. Uh, whenever I've tried to do it that way, I seem to stumble more. Uh, so I just press the button and start to spout. And uh, a month ago, maybe, when I was uh, reading this book, I said something which stuck in my craw because it was a false statement. I said that something something about his handling of the plot mechanics uh, that the author was masterful yada yada as long as you uh, were in line with the ends to which he was aiming well even even whilst I spoke I knew that was actually not quite true I, I, his construction of the plot, while serviceable, is less than masterful, and that is being uh, driven home daily and even hourly as I read The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. So I've lost my physical copy of the book. I'm actually listening to it on an audiobook, and while I was reading this book, the Age of Innocence, I did find that I already owned a copy of The House of Mirth, a Penguin edition, and I have no idea where it has gotten to. Um, but this is true mastery. And uh, so far, the three uh, books by Wharton that I've read um, exhibit that mastery on every page, in every line. It's really quite incredible. But then it, it does bring up some other thoughts. And the one edge, I would say, which Harris has over Wharton is the presence of sex scenes. Now, the world of Edith Wharton, uh, it, particularly in this house of mirth, you have a main female character, and she's uh, been being helped out financially by an older gentleman. And I think we all know that he has designs upon her, and I, I will leave it at that. Um, but in the world of Wharton and in the world of a lot of Western literature, um, those designs, those further implications are such a thing as is kept off stage, off, off camera. And I, I never really gave it much thought um, until last year when I read The Plum in the Golden Vase. Now, it is uh, reputed uh, to be something of a pornographic novel, but Having read the full thing, I would dispute that. It is a novel about people's lives and 
uh, the sex scenes which um, dot the narrative really play no greater function than what you might find in a Hollywood movie. In, in this case, it's just portraying the lives of these people. And this, uh, this deals with um, a compound with uh, several wives and concubines uh, uh, belonging to a, a wealthy merchant, the compound, not the women. <coughs> for, 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 um, certainly not the women. Uh, they, they are their own independent spirits. But that aspect of daily life figures into the narrative. And I found it and find it refreshing. I think that was um, a reason perhaps why when I read this, I thought it was the best thing I'd read this year, perhaps just because it is so refreshing to have uh, human sexuality included uh, in the, the makeup of the characters. Um, now, I, I am now beginning to believe that this book, The House of Mirth, is vying that one out or edging that one out as my best book of the year so far. Uh, it's just incredible. Um, but I like, uh, uh, last year I also read The Arabian Nights. Well, let me, here, let me do that. And then you can see The, the Arabian Nights. Whoops. Uh, we are very low tech at this channel, so my three volumes of the Arabian Nights are boxed away uh, where I know where they are, but nevertheless, I, I uh, can't get to them easily. Uh, so the, the Wharton House of Mirth is missing, but it is nice to have a narrative which just makes allotment to that facet of being human. And I think what has happened in the West, because all of that is off stage, then you wind up with these sort of aberrant works like the Thousand Years of Sodom by the Marquis de Sade, which I read as a young boy, and there was one about uh, uh, with the title of a woman whose name began with a J, I think, which I read both of those when I was young. I got them from the public library in the town that I grew up in. And of course I read them. And his shtick seems to be just being transgressive, writing scenes which uh, transgress all sorts of uh, morality, any kind of moral line that has been drawn, he tries to transgress in as many uh, permutations as his imagination is capable of thinking uh, about. So he, he has an endless sequence of sex scenes, but they're all very much the same tone and the same tenor. Um, and so I don't have any real conclusions. I wish I had thought about these things uh, more when I was uh, beginning my writing career. My plays tended to include uh, some amount of that stuff because my master uh, in the, the sphere of playwriting was Aristophanes, and that is the one uh, location in our literature where um, sexuality is presented without shame. So on that, um, I do recommend this book. It's a, a five-volume set, and it's a hefty undertaking. You might be best waiting for a Penguin edition, which eliminates all of the notes. Um, I recommend all of the books that I've shown, but right now, uh, Wharton has a special place.
place in my heart, and I probably would recommend this the least. Thank you very much for stopping by my channel.